30 days ago, this lake was nothing more than an empty boneyard. As times go on, friendships will be born, and life will evolve. And it all starts on day one. I wanted to make this a challenge where I have to go to an actual lake to find everything I need for my tank. And it all starts with a bucket of sand from the beach. I fill up my bucket with sand and bring it back home. I needed to mix the sand with the substrate, otherwise the plants would die. And little did I know, this went terribly wrong. And you'll see why in a second. I fill the bottom of the tank with soil, then it was time to add rocks. I place them strategically to make sure there's an O in the center only because it looks cool. I start filling it up with water and this is where I realized something was terribly wrong. Look at the water, it looks like sh Bruh. So I began to drain it and my new idea was genius. I emptied the rest of the bag and put a two inch layer of sand to protect the soil. I put the rocks perfectly back where they were before, cause something actually messed it all up. I carefully filled up the water with one cup at a time and my genius idea brought me clean water. We now have our base layer and I let it sit for 10 days. After our tank settled, we now have to go into the wilderness to find our new forms of life. I was only here for a few things, but I found this lizard and his head is stabilized like a gimbal. I begin my hunt, and I might find my first suspect, but he didn't like me. So I went to this pond that had duckweed on the top. Sometimes it gets so thick you could even walk across. I collect some duckweed and put it in this small box. I take one more patch then I'm on my way to find more plants. After looking around I spot this little patch and I think it's perfect for our system. I reach in without hesitation and even without looking for snapping turtles. And I rip out a good handful. Now I don't know if these plants have a weird mutation that will kill everything but I'm just going to add some gravel to the floor. These little rocks will provide tons of structure for our upcoming life for our ecosystem. These plants that we will add will add tons of nutrition and will keep the nitrate levels down. And without these plants, our ecosystem would not be complete. I put plants in every corner of the tank and I start getting ready to add our duckweed. As soon as I put them in, they started to lay out just like they would in the lake. And not gonna lie, the duckweed kinda f***ed it up just a little bit. Like look at all the floating inside of the water. I tried to clean it up, but I decided to let the ecosystem do its thing. And now we will introduce our first forms of life. Assassin snails, and I'm gonna name every one of these guys Bob. These little guys will stay in their pack, and they have the ability to take down any larger snails together. However, they do not attack their own kind. Our Bobs will be responsible for eating leftover food, or any unwanted snails that came from our plants. As one of them go hunting, he might just find his next meal. A little zebra snail will make a nice snack for an afternoon. And we will now introduce our second form of life. These little guys are called golden back shrimp, and I'm gonna name them Tim. These guys are very important and will help clean any unwanted algae and leftover food. Together, our shrimp and snails will be taking care of any unwanted waste. And here in this tank, we are all friends. As we let our snails and shrimp begin to settle, I let the tank sit for another five days. On our surface level, we begin to see our duckweed becoming a bit fuller and reproducing just a bit more. Down below, we begin to see a little bit of buildup and debris, which is good for the plants to help grow. We can also see a little bit of algae that starts to grow on the glass. And now I'll introduce our third form of life. 
the Gobi. And I'm just gonna name this little guy Gobi. At first, he wanted to explore his new home. Gobi will be helping all the shrimps and bobs and specializes in cleaning the sand and substrate from unwanted particles and algae. With all our friends, we can sustain this ecosystem for time to come. And that's until I introduce our new form of life. These two guys are called Julitos, and I named them Joe and Lou, and they come in a pack of two. I put these two in there to rule the kingdom as they're aggressive and quick. As they grow, a couple will form, driving any other fish away from their territory. After they get settled, they start to explore to say hi to their new friends. They meet each other, but apparently Joe had other plans. He starts to explore and finds himself a new home. As our four friends get settled, I'd like to introduce a new member to our ecosystem. The Red Tail Shark. This isn't any ordinary shark. This shark has the most unique color patterns. And I'm gonna name him Thomas. Thomas tends to be a bit shy at first, but he makes an effort to greet himself. And he might have a little anxiety. I adopted him from the store because he looked really sad in his fish tank. All in all, his color combination of red and black is truly remarkable. As everyone begins to get comfy, I thought I'd like to give them a little treat. Bloodworms. As the scent lingers in the air, the goby is the first one to start feeding. As the scent travels, someone else wants to join the party. But goby won't give up without a fight. He just might be the smallest, but earned respect from all the others. With all the commotion, the assassin snail cleans up the leftovers, and everybody grabs their last bite before going. At the end of the feeding, everybody got a full belly and went off to go to bed. After hitting the 30 day mark, I didn't realize how much our tank would change. Our plants got covered in algae, and our duckweed starts to bloom a stunning scenery. Our shrimps, snails, and goby helped clean the leftover waste which helped maintain water stability. And to watch over everyone, Joe and Lou made sure everyone was safe to make sure all mandatory jobs could continue. And if I've learned anything from this video, I began to realize small creatures like this have their own separate world just like us. And if you'd like to check out another video, you'd probably like this one.